Welcome back to the Closure Cones walkthrough number 19. This time we're going to take a look at Java interop. So how do we interoperate with Java code from Clojure? So let's jump right into it. The very first one has us taking a look at this class function. So what happens when you call class for some object? Well that's going to return back the class, the type of the given parameter. So in this case we're calling class with a parameter that is a string. So we would expect it should return back the name of the class which is string. And just to demonstrate this I'm going to copy this out here in the REPL and we can see exactly what it returns. So you see the fully qualified uh, name here java.lang.string and you can reference classes just like that in Clojure. So I'll type that in and that works. But Java Lang uh, is already imported into the namespace here so we can simply say string and that works just as well. So the dot signifies easy and direct Java interoperation. So notice just as we saw last time um, there was a way to use this dot and then the name of a method to call methods on the given object. So here you see we're, we're dealing with this string and we want to call the to uppercase method on the string. And we know that that's going to return back an all uppercase version of this string. So let's just type that in here. Select will be uppercase, star, unchanged, and then from all uppercase. And that works. So these are kind of special anytime you see a dot and then the name of a method when it's being treated kind of like a function it's not exactly a function but it's a little bit special <laughs> so let's see here they're gonna tell us all about that but instance method calls are very different from normal functions so here we're trying to uh, create this list or this vector of three uppercase strings and we're going to do that by mapping some function over the, th these three lowercase strings. So, you know, a naive way to do that might be to say two uppercase, right? We pass the two uppercase and look, it's complaining pretty loudly. Um, yeah, even when I put it in the right capitalization, unable to resolve symbol dot two uppercase. So it doesn't know what we're talking about. So this is not really a function name. This is being treated special by closure. But one thing we can do here is just define an anonymous function that's going to call the two uppercase. So let's do that. Let's just do the quick syntax here for an anonymous function with just one parameter and that does the trick. So this is a simple way to wrap this, uh, this call to a method. All right, constructing might be harder than breaking. Okay, we've got kind of a long construct here, but we're basically just creating this countdown latch. You can see it's using the period to, inst uh, to call the constructor, and it needs to pass some kind of a value to the countdown latch. And this whole result, this whole countdown latch is being passed to, or stored in the latch variable, and here, it's simply calling the get count method on the latch and that's returning 10. So here's where you actually pass in the, the count that you're initial, initializing it to. So we're going to pass 10 here and sure enough that got it to pass. Cool. Okay. Not one more static methods are <laughs> slashing prices. Okay. So, here you can see we're trying to call this power function or pow function on the math class and this is a static uh, method so the way you do it is you say math the name of the class and then slash and the name of the static method to be able to call that so here the pow function is being passed with 2 to the 10th power and what's that like um 1024 and that works so there you go you can see how you can 
directly deal with classes and methods from Java with no problem. I mean, it's very natural, very easy to, to, to do this. Um, cool. Well, that's a very simple introduction. There's a little bit more that we could cover, and I encourage you to check out the closure.org website where this is documented very thoroughly. I'll give you a link right here, and I'll include it in the description. I'll give you a hint if you do check out the Closure.org website and look at the section on Java Interop, one of the things you'll learn is how do we handle this case where we tried to use to uppercase as a uh, function name and obviously it's complaining about that and one of the things we can do is simply say memfn and there you go this you see returns a function so it takes a method and turns it into a function that you can call and that's kind of what we did here with this anonymous function syntax so maybe a little clearer way to do that would be just wrapping it with memfn and you don't need the dot anymore when you do that okay so that's just a taste but uh, go to that website and check it out for yourself and you're gonna learn all the things you need to know to be able to interoperate with Java from your closure code alright well happy coding and I'll see you in the next video